And people I don't like, like Mr. Pagella, he just talks all the time. So you want that though? No, I want people I like. See, I don't like you. So there's a few I others like. I don't like, but I'm not going to tell them because I don't think they're tough as you are, Mr. Pagella. I thought they they might eat Tide Pods, so we might have to walk, you know, on eggshells. There might be yeah. buttercups and snowflakes. After Mr. Pickett, pod, slow down. Mr. Pickett, you need to slow down. You're gonna, you're gonna choke on your food, man. All right, here we go. It's glad that we can have fun because you're not gonna have fun in second calc. I'll tell you that right now. All right, so let's go ahead and get in my homework, which I had it pulled up. There we go. And I'm just gonna pick the number one and I'm gonna go until I see a first test question. Let's go to a test question. Nah, that's not a test question. That's not a test question. That's just slope. That's not, that's just slope. I've shown y'all all of these when we did the difference quotient. Okay, there's one. All right, there's a test question. So I want y'all to write this one down. I'm gonna have to let it come down a little bit because it's too big. There we go. I want you to write this graph down. Try to, you need to try to make it accurate, the graph, and write these five things down right here. Okay, so go ahead and do that. And this is a test question, so you might wanna have it in your notes. I'm going to do about three or four of these for you before we run into the test. Okay. Isaac got that earphone and ear mouthpiece going on looking like a DJ. I wish I could get one of those. I'm going to get me one so I can look like a DJ. It's just or easier so you don't have that. It is easier so you don't have that garbage audio quality. Say again. It's easier so like people can actually hear you. Yeah, I think I'm going to get me a set. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep up with the times. Mr. Cronin, that's a nice picture of your ceiling fan. That's real nice. Thank you. Oh, now your big head's in the way. Thank you. He's got his, he's got his podcast stuff on too. You just can't see it. Looks like got a shining orb on top of his head. Yeah, it's just my uh, aura. It's so yeah, bright. It, 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 okay. Is that your positive energy? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to draw this while y'all are writing. I'm going to draw it. I'm going to try to draw it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we got a point at three and zero. And then we go move up to four and five. Four. One, two, three, four, five. And that is an open circle. And then seven, four and seven, five, six, seven is a closed circle. And then we go down to seven and three, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. So that looks like this. And then it goes up to BFE. and goes down here and then here there so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and a says H of four. In other words, A says plug in four. 
So H of four means plug in four. B says, what is happening with the function when a x approaches four? And then C says, plug in seven. And then D says, what is happening to the function limit? What is happening to H of X when X approaches seven? And then E says, what is happening to the function when X is approaching eight? Now, before we even start, I want to show you something, and I'm going to show you what the limit means. Let me pull this up. Hold on just a second. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so file open. Define derivative. Now, a lot of you saying, well, we're not on derivatives. That's chapter three. Yeah, but we are on limits. And I'm going to show you something here. Create Q. Why can't I move? Can I move? No, I can't. I wanted to move. No. Give me a second here. That's really not what I wanted to move. I just can't win. I'm trying to get it to a certain point. I want P and Q to be further apart and it's not working. But anyway, there's our secant line and we've talked about this before. And we know that the X plus H, there it is. We talked about that before. And what happens when you let H equal to zero? Well, we talked about that, that the secant line turns into the what? Well, why didn't it keep going? Really? There. So somebody tell me what's happening to the X, to the H, the distance between X and X plus H, and the distance between F of X and F of X plus H. What's happening? They're getting closer together. They're getting closer together, and that's what a limit is. Okay? Let me give you another example of a limit. I'm going to let you look at that for a while because it does. Let me see. There we go. And you see that X, that H is coming down toward X. All right, let me tell you what a limit is. And this is not going to be in your book because this is pragmatic. It makes sense. Different words for limit. Limit can mean getting closer.
a 25 cent word for getting closer is what? Converge, but not what? Not touching. I like to tell my students when you're talking about calculus that you're talking about the 100th width of a hair. Okay. Take a hair out of your head and think about it being divided into 100 strands and take one of those strands, and that's the width I'm talking about. You got to think outside the what? Outside the box. You got to think outside the box here. Okay, the distance between X and X plus H is the width of a hundredth of a hair. Okay. Because it cannot touch P. Q cannot touch P. But it gets to in a hundredth of a hair fragment and it turns the secant line into a what? Tangent line. All right. So limit is basically convergence. All right. Let's think of it like this. Let's say that we, we have a room. And this is the room, and we have a wall right here. And that's our target wall. In other words, we're going to do an experiment, and we're going to use the target wall, and we're going to use Mr. Smith. Okay? Here is Mr. Smith. There's Mr. Smith. And we tell Mr. Smith, that he has to take a full stride side step toward this wall. OK, Mr. Smith. Take. A full. Stride. Side step. To the wall. And then each step after that takes half the previous step. OK, so he's going to take one full step. Let's say he's got a big, long stride, and let's say that it's four foot. And somebody tell me what's the next stride he's going to take. Two no, four foot. Two foot. You got to take half of the previous step. So what's the next step? One foot. What's the next step? One half a foot. What's the next step? One fourth of a foot. What's the next step? One eighth of a foot. What's the next step? One sixteenth of a foot. What's the next step? One thirty second of a foot. Will he ever reach, touch the wall? Will Mr. Smith ever reach or touch the wall? No. 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 He will never touch the wall. Why? Because each step is half the previous step. Mathematically, he will never reach the wall. He will come within one hundredth of a hairline beside the wall, but he will never touch the wall. You got to think outside the box here. That's what a limit is. This is a limit. This is a limit. The whole point of a limit is that you are converging or getting close to something. Does everybody understand that? And you got to think outside the box now because you haven't been thinking like this 
in your Algebra 1 and the Algebra 2 class. You might have got into it with a pre-calculus class, but that's what a limit is. Now, does anybody know what this is called when your X, you're converging on X and you're converging on Y at the same time? Does anybody know what theorem that's called? Excuse me. The squeeze theorem. How did you know that? I failed calc once. What? I took calc before. Oh, uh, that's what it's called. Write that down. It's called the squeeze theorem. As you get closer to X, the Y gets closer to the first Y. Or F of X plus H gets closer to F of X. It's called the squeeze theorem. All right, now that's enough graphics for today. Now let's go back to the problem. Now, there's also three types of, let me to get into this right quick. There's three types of limit problems. There is the limit where you plug and chug. Example, Primary F of limit coming in on a secure channel. as X approaches 4 of 2X plus 7. Now, this is not a radical and it's not a rational, so therefore you can plug any number in and you don't have to worry about it blowing up, right? You don't have to worry about an error. You don't have to worry about it does not exist. You don't have to worry about the domain. So you just plug four in. Eight plus seven is what? So that means as you approach X is equal to four, you also approach Y is equal to what? 15. As I approach X is equal to 4, I also approach X is equal to 1.5. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's say 6. Oh, there we go. I can move it. Good. As I approach, X is equal to 6. I didn't know I could move that. As I approach, X is equal to 6. Or, that's not 6, that's 3. As I approach, X is equal to 3. I'm also approaching y is equal to 1.6. Okay, that's plug and chug. 31 message coming in on secure channel. Plug and chug. Then you got an algebraic limit. An algebraic limit is usually when you start off with an error. Or if you're from around here, an error. If you're not from around here, it's error. Mr. Pagia, Pagila, do you say error? Error? Or do you I say, say error. error? I say error. I say E-R-R. -R. That's what I say. Like Clemson? Yeah, Clemson. No, I say Clemson. I pronounce <laughs> it with a P because I'm a terrorist and an NRA member and a Southerner. So I pronounce you. it Clemson with a P. So those of you who don't want to sound like us terrorists, you say Clemson, like the ESPN announcers. Clemson. Here we are in Clemson, South Carolina. Sound like an idiot. Anyway, here's one limit. As X approaches 2 of X squared, I'm sorry, yeah, X squared minus 4 
over x minus 2. Now, what's, what's wrong with this problem from the get-go? It's undefined. Anybody want to tell me? What happens if you start with plug and chug? The bottom is zero. It's zero over zero. The, the function blows up because you get zero in the denominator and you can't have that. So you say, okay, that's it. Nothing's that simple in calculus. So you go to plan B, which is use what? Algebra. And you go, wait a minute, that top is shortcut number three, limit as X approaches two of X plus two times X minus two over X minus two. And then what happens to the X minus twos? Yeah, so well. And now you've got the limit as X approaches two of X plus two dot dot dot, which is four. Now, what does this mean? You, you know you're not going to get away with this without some kind of ramification. And that ramification is, put a dot around this, even though we canceled it, you've got to show an open circle on the graph with that, okay? Usually when they ask you to do a problem like this, they will ask you to show the graph. And the graph will be the graph of this line, x plus 2, but you'll have an open circle at x is equal to 2. And we'll show you that in just a minute. And then the third type question is a graph type question. Limit via graph. And that's where you got a problem and you got a you got a function here and let's say x is equal to two here and that's equal to three this is f of x they don't give you what it is they just say limit as x approaches two from the right limit as X approaches two from the left. And you say to yourself, what in the heck does that mean? Well, what happens when you approach two from the, from the right? You get down to what? Three. So the limit, as you approach two from the right, that's the positive, you get three which is that Y right there. What happens when you approach two from the left? You get close to what? Three, again. <coughs> if these two are equal, if the, if the limit from the right is equal to the limit from the left, then the limit exists, which is equal to three. Write that down and you need to highlight it in pink. If the limits Priority one message coming equal, in on secure channel. then the limit exists. So somebody tell me what happens if they don't equal. They don't exist. They don't exist. The limit does not exist. It's undefined. Need, what? Somebody said something. So you need to write that down. If they don't equal, <laughs> they do not exist. So now let's look at the problem that we are given while 
I check up my blowing up telephone and see what the heck's going on. Priority one message coming Be in quiet. on your channel. You have a work email. I'm in class until what time is it? I don't know what time it is. Till what time's class over? One fifteen. One fifteen. One fifteen. This is a colleague wanting me to. It's a long story, but I had to. This is it's another teacher at Tri County. All right, so let's do this problem. I'm going to plug in 4 for X. That's what that means. Plug in 4 for X. And there's my 4 right there. So I've got a choice of a undefined function or a defined function. Which one do you think I'm going to pick? You never pick an undefined function. Write that down. You never pick an undefined function. So you're going to go with that solid. And that solid is seven. Going for an undefined function is like buying a car that doesn't have an engine in it. Notice I didn't say a motor. Why? Because a motor is electric, an engine is combustible. That's why. That irritates me to death when somebody calls a, a, a motor, a, a car engine a motor. That drives me bananas. Question. What if, it's, what if it's an electric car? Then Hubert does not say anything. Hubert keeps his mouth shut because he don't want any body to get offended. And where do they get the lithium for those batteries? Where do they get the lithium? Where do they get the lithium? China. Out of the what? Uh, I guess the ground. <laughs> Out of the ground, yeah. Yeah, they do. And uh, where, <laughs> does the, where does the electricity come to charge the batteries? Um, from a power plant? Yeah. All right, so let's go to the next one. Limit h of x, what's happening to the function, to the graph, when you are approaching 4 from the left and the right? So as I'm approaching 4, so I'm going to take a green marker and an orange marker. As I approach 4 from the left and I approach 4 from the right, What am I approaching as far as the Y goes? That means I want somebody to say something. What am I approaching? I didn't say what is the answer when you plug it in. I said, what Y am I approaching with the orange right. line and the green line. What? Five. I think so. Five. So what happens when I plug in seven? Somebody tell me. What happens when I plug in seven? It's undefined. Undefined, good job. Undefined or the limit does not exist. Well, no, not that it does not exist. When you plug in seven, you have an undefined number there. Now, what happens as I approach seven? Well, let's do that again. As I approach seven from the left, I am coming that way. And if I approach seven from the right, 
and I'm coming this way. So what number in the y direction am I approaching when I'm approaching seven in the x direction? Three. Good job. All right, you do eight. <coughs> Excuse me. I got to lay off them Marlboro Reds. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use yellow, my favorite color, and blue. As I approach eight from the left, I'm approaching this number from the left. And as I approach eight from the right, I'm approaching that number from the right. So I'm going to take my handy dandy marker and I'm going to draw a line. And what number am I getting close to? Four. Four. Supposed to be a four. So the answer there is a four. I'm going to tell y'all something. There are some teachers that will lobotomize you with limits. Okay? There are some teachers that when you go into the classroom, you're okay, and then when you come out, you, you don't know what day it is. That's all there is to limits. You've got to think, converging, moving toward. All right, let's do another problem. Has anybody ever had limits before and you didn't know which way was up? Anybody? No. Okay, so y'all always knew limits. Yeah. And the yeah, checks I'm familiar and mail. Yeah, what? Yeah, I'm familiar with it from well, you're familiar. Well, you had a good teacher then because a lot of people really suck at limits. So let's do another problem. What is this? Whatever. All right, so let's go to the next problem. Let's find a one that's a little bit more challenging. I want to find one that has you saying if a limit actually uh -huh. exists. There we go. There's one. So draw this one as best you can. I'll make it a little bit bigger, but I don't know how much bigger. Yeah, see, that messes it up. Yeah, you can draw that. There you go. Go ahead and draw this while I'm drawing it. And I need to put the timer. Hold on a minute. Let's see. Clock. And y'all said class is over at what? 12.15? I meant 1.15? Yes, sir. Okay, well, I need to... I need to just do two more problems and then jump over to the test. So let me draw this one. OK, we got something going. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And it says we got a point at two, comma three, two, and three. 
And we've got an open circle at two, negative two. And then looks like a point going down to close to three, negative three, three, negative three, be right in there. And then it's going up to five and negative one. So one, two, three, four, five, and negative one is right there. So that line looks something like that. And this line looks like one and two, and then zero, zero close to it. And then down below, one, negative one and positive one, and negative one and a half and three, negative one and a half and three. So that looks like okay. So here's my drawing, and I got uh, a. What does the limit look like? F of x. What does the limit look like at approaching two from the right left? B. What does the limit look like? This is a good test question because this is the type I would ask. What does the limit look like with X approaching two from the right? And then what is the limit? You're checking to see if those two equal. What is the limit as X approaches two? Okay, that's the type question I would ask. Does that have any other questions? And then what is F of two? If you plugged in two, what would you get? F of two. All right, so here's my drawing, and this is a good test question. So I'm going to apply, I'm going to use my green highlighter, and I'm going to come from the left. So as I approach two from the left, I'm approaching what? Three. Three, so I put a three right here in green because I'm approaching from the left. And I forgot to number my numbers, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative two, negative three. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to use my pink and I'm going to approach two from the right. As I approach two from the right, I'm approaching what? Negative two. Negative two, and I'm going to put that in pink. Where's my pink? Does three equal negative two? No. Never. So you put a big A not equal sign. Therefore, the limit as X approaches two does not what? Does not exist. And what is f of 2? Well, if you plug in f of 2, you're going to get 3 because a closed circle will overpower a open circle, so you would go with the 3. f of 2 is equal to 3. But you could argue that it does not, it's undefined, but most of the time, let's go and answer that question. Limit is three. Answer. And limit is uh, what? Negative two. Does not exist. 
because they don't equal. And I would say f of 2 is equal to, what I say, 3. And that's it. And that's the test question. So hopefully you don't suck at limits now. I wanted to find an algebraic. OK, there's an algebraic right there. But that's shortcut. The X minus fives cancel, but I'm going to show you. You have a work email. Which one is it? Well, let's let's do this one and then I see it for me. We're going to go on to the test. So I can show you what it looks like. So here we've got F of X is equal to X squared, and this is a test question, over X minus 5. Now I'm just going to go over here because that's all you need. So this is shortcut number 3, X plus 5 times X minus 5 over X minus 5. And what happens to the X minus 5s? They cancel. They cancel, so you're left with the limit as x or x plus five of the limit. It's probably going to equal five, but let me go back and check it. Limit as x approaches five, yeah. As x approaches five is equal to what's five plus five? 10. 10. So let's graph this sucker. You know you got a y intercept of 5. I'm sorry. That's a horizontal shift of 5 to the left. Um, plug in 0. Wait a minute. Plug in 0 for x. You get the y intercept. So that's going to be 25 over 5 which is five. So one, two, three, four, five. And we got a one to one. So you got a graph that looks like that. But what am I going to put at 10 at five? One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to put an open circle right there. And if you don't put that open circle, you will get it wrong. So I'm going to highlight that open circle because you have to you have to recognize the denominator on the original problem. Even though you canceled it out, you have to go back and recognize it with that open circle. Does everybody understand that? And what does it, it basically goes to 10 right there. When you approach five, it goes to 10. So that's the way you answer that question. But make sure and look at the graph. Everybody look at the graph. Where do you see a positive slope? It's either going to be Bravo or Delta. Which one is it? It's Delta. OK. And that's your answer. And if you plug in five, you're going to get an undefined function. The value of five does not exist. If you plug in five, you're going to get an undefined function. But what is the limit approaching at five? It's approaching 10. And that's how you do the limit with algebra. All right, let me jump over to the to the handy dandy. No, I don't want to. Yeah. Let's go over to our test. And we've got two tests. Or is it one test? Yeah, we've got. Let's see. What is this? This is our first test. Isn't it? Yeah. 140. Yeah. Uh, 1.1 through 1.4, and then a limits test. So when you go to your 
Assignments, you should see two tests. And click on test. And they're not showing up. Why aren't they showing up? I thought they. Oh, they're not going to show up till in the morning. Sorry. So let me go to assignment manager to show you. There they are. And they will show up in the morning. And that one's not assigned. OK, and as you can see, there's the dates. And midnight on the 31st. And I'm going to just go ahead and show you some of the retrieve review. And I'll spend just about seven or eight minutes on this. There is a solve by completing the square. So what you need to write down, you can write down the question if you can write that fast, or you can just say CTS because you're going to complete the square on a lot of this. OK, so that's a. And I'll include the answer right there so you can write down the answer. If you write down fast enough. Next. Again, factor. Now you can factor that one by factoring out a common term. And I didn't cover these because you've been doing factoring for the last couple of years in algebra before you got to this class. So you should know how to factor. All right. And that's the bonus. That's a bonus. That's a bonus. You got about 10 bonuses, so that means you got about 24 problems or 20. Factor of the trinomial using the F, reverse FOIL. You're just going to break that up and break it up into two binomials, algebra two stuff. Rewrite as a logarithm, as a single logarithm. So that's going to be log of 1 million divided by 10,000. 10, and then that would be the log of 100. So you got completing the square, factoring, logarithms. So there's three things right there that you should have written in your notebook. Rationalizing the denominator. Write that down. Rationalizing the denominator. Rationalizing the numerator. Find solutions by factoring. Reverse FOIL. That one's not supposed to be on there. I'm going to take that one off. Uh, I'll have to find that one. Uh, I'll take that one off. Next one. Completing the square. OK, this is exponential notation. Writing radicals and exponents. So I would write radical notation. I'm going to leave that up for a few seconds so you can write it down. Of course, you can watch this on the video, but nobody watches the video, so. And then if I didn't have the videos, y'all know what y'all would be saying. You need to, you need to uh, record these. Yeah, OK, whatever.
Okay, next one. Rationalize the denominator. I would multiply by the square root of X minus two on the top and on the bottom. And that's all you do because that's, that's all you can do. And it will clear the, the, the radical on the bottom. Use the graph to determine the domain and range. The domain is from negative one exclusive to seven exclusive. The range is from negative two exclusive to four exclusive. Logarithm. So now you got two logarithm questions. Logarithm, three logarithm questions. That's definition of a logarithm. A to the Y, so that's going to be 25 to the X power is equal to one fifth. 25 to the X power is equal to one fifth. Uh, given the solve the given equation by the zero property. In other words, you can solve it by uh, solve it by I solve it by completing the square. But you you can try to do it by factoring. Logarithms. So you now you got five, four or five logarithm questions. That is the definition of a logarithm again. A to the Y, so it'd be 64 to the 1 6 power is equal to 2. This is your vertical and horizontal shifts. What's happening? Oh, well, here they're asking for the domain and range. It's not a fraction, so it's all real numbers. And the range is going to be from negative four to infinity. I'm trying to hurry. Logarithm, that would be log base three of X plus one divided by X is equal to two. And then you can do the definition of a logarithm. Factor. Looks like reverse FOIL. That's a vertical and horizontal shift. Vertical and horizontal shift. Bonus. 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 Find the inverse. And I'll let you write that one down since that's the first inverse I've saw seen. So that's the square root of X minus eight and turn it into an inverse. Hmm. Next. Completing the square. And Solve the triangle using Pythagorean theorem. And you should know that from, from your introductory to trig. Okay. Now, there's only one thing I need to do, and that is to get out of this and change something. Edit. Because I'm not going to put that stupid question in there. I just got to find it. They might know what that's 1.4, wasn't it?
I think that's it. There you go. I took that off for you. You're welcome. Thank you, Hubert. You're welcome. And it's still nobody says a word. That's all right. I'll put five more on there since since y'all not gonna say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. All right. Now let's look at the second one. Limit test. Limit test. And of course you got 10 or 13. You only got about 10 math problems on this one. Find the limit. What is 16 minus 16? I'm sorry. What is 16 minus 2 times 6? B, 4. 4. I'll do some of the easy ones. Um, there's your bonus questions. It's not supposed to pile them. Okay, here we go. For the function, right graph, but go ahead and draw that graph as best you can. We've got seven minutes. So, And what's happening as I approach one from the right? I'm approaching this guy, which is what? Three. Next. This one you're going to factor out. I'm not going to fool with it, but you can get well. You what if you plug in infinity? You're going to get infinity plus infinity plus 11 over infinity, infinity plus 18. And that comes out to pretty much be 11 over 18. No. Nope. No, it's going to be infinity because what's infinity over infinity? Should be infinity. No. Oh, I know what it is. It's the, the coefficient. I'm sorry. The coefficient. Now, notice that. I'm having a brain bubble. 17 over 4. Because infinity plus infinity, all that's going to cancel. Infinity over infinity cancels, and that leaves negative 17 over negative 4. I thought it would be 11 over 18. I apologize. I'm, I'm in a hurry, too. Trying to get y'all limit. Plug in zero. Three, that's zero plus four. Square root of four is two. Two plus two is four. Two over four is what? One half. One half. Thank you. This one, just match it up. Your higher value, you're going to always subtract the higher value minus the lower value over the higher value minus the lower value. So we need B A B A. Where is B A B A? There it is. B. B A B A. Delta. Next. Determine the limit at infinity. Well, they want you to multiply by the conjugate over the conjugate first. So they want to clear as much as they can. So you got all this over one multiplied by this. And it's basically going to get rid of the radical on the top. And then you just plug in infinity. Find all the vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes set the denominator equal to what? Come on, people. Algebra 2, what is it? 
Set the denominator equal to what? Zero. zero. And everybody knows absolute value, absolute vodka. You know this is absolute value. So it's going to be absolute value of X. And then we have a vertical shift down. So as X approaches zero, Y is approaching what? Negative two. Negative two. So you see that the, it's not find the limit, plug in. Negative. Why do I not worry about algebra here? Well, it's not a fraction or a radical. So you don't have to do any algebra. You just plug in what? Plug and chug. Let's say negative 2 to the fifth power is negative 32. That's negative 96. And negative 2 raised to the fourth power is what? 16 times a negative 3, which is negative 48. Oh, well, I don't forgot what the first one was. I ain't going to minus 48 from whatever the first one is. That'd be 32, 96. 96 minus 48 is what? 48 or 58? Probably 58. And 58 plus, let's see, X is negative 2. That's negative 8. 58 minus 48. I done lost count is 10. 10 plus 4. Yeah, I'm nowhere near it. My mind went back bonkers on that one. And the last one, limit as limit 9 over infinity. That's 0, negative 2. 9 over infinity. What's 9 over 100? What's 9 over 1,000? What's 9 over 10 million? What's 9 over 100 million? What's 9 over 1 trillion? It's 0. And 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So as you can see, the limit test is not unbearably, you know, not being able to do it. Who's got questions? Um, did you say that we get more than one attempt yep i'm sorry i should have said that this is the first test you get one attempt i'll tell you what i'll do right quick settings for class or i'll change this yes yeah, settings for class so you can see it today is the 27th so i'll change it to the 27th so you can actually see it hold on a second and i'll show it to you Change this to the 22nd. I'm at the 27th. I'm doing this for a reason, okay? Just hold on. I'm not doing it so y'all can run around in circles going, oh my God, to do this today. Now when you go to main menu and assignments and test, there they are. Look at there. How many attempts do you have on the? Oh, oh my goodness! I'm giving y'all five attempts on the review. Why? Because if you suck at algebra, you're going to suck what? At calculus. So that's why I gave y'all five attempts. Takes a higher of the five. So if you make a 98 on the first one and you don't take four other ones, and that's 98 with four zeros, the highest score is 98. And on the limit test, you get three, you got 90 minutes. That gives everybody 50 minutes more than they're supposed to have because the test is set at 50 minutes. You get 90 minutes. And this right here is the deadline. Does that help you, Ms. Brown? It tells you everything right there. Yes, sir. Thank you. What else? Anybody else got questions? Um, do we have class this coming Monday? We should check the academic calendar. I sent y'all that in the because I have I haven't even looked. I sent y'all that right here. 
Sunder files. And academic calendar should be summer 2021 February. Somebody have that can look and see because I have no idea. It does say we have class. I didn't know if. OK, then we have class then. You were changing. OK. Yeah. OK. Who else has got questions? All right, y'all get out of here. And y'all, let's say y'all don't come back tomorrow, right? So I will see y'all Monday. Y'all are all winners, except for Mr. Pagella. See y'all. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. I ain't no professor. I'm Hubert. Thank you. But thank you. <laughs> see y'all.